This is 8.1a of geometry. So you've probably heard the Pythagorean theorem, right? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, the theorem actually says that if the triangle is a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, our a is one of our legs, our b is one of our legs, and our c is the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is the one that's across from the right angle. The legs are the ones that are connected to the right angle. And there's this thing called a Pythagorean triple, and that's three numbers, that three whole numbers specifically, that work in a squared plus b squared equals c squared, the Pythagorean theorem. Because sometimes if you choose two numbers, and so you choose like your a and your b, and you try to figure out what your c is, most of the time you're going to get a decimal. But these are ones that work out perfectly so that each number is a whole number. So 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13... 8, 15, 17, and 7, 24, 25. Also, though, you can take one of these, and let's say we take the first one, and multiply everything by 2. So we get 6, 8, 10. That's also a Pythagorean triple. You can multiply each number by the same number, right? Multiply them all by 2, multiply them all by 3, and you'll get another Pythagorean triple. Okay, so let's try one. We are told that we have a right triangle and the legs are 10 and 24. So we've got 10 and 24, and I'm gonna plug into a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we're plugging in for the legs, that's a and b. Doesn't matter which one you put where. 10 squared plus 24 squared equals c squared. 10 squared is 100. 24 squared is 576 equals c squared. So this is, I'll move over here, 676 equals c squared. And the opposite of squaring, so to get rid of a squaring, you need to take the square root. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and the square root of 676 is 26. So c equals 26. Just a side comment, whenever you draw in your square root, Right? I just took the square root of both sides. I drew that in myself. Technically, your answer is always going to be positive and negative. So, technically, the square root of 676 is positive 26 or it's negative 26. Since we're talking about distances, the negative answer doesn't make any sense. So, in this case, we're just going to go with the positive answer. Okay. One thing I want to review is simplifying radicals. So, simplifying square roots. Let's say we have the square root of 50, okay? We could do that in a calculator and get a decimal, round it, and call that our answer, but we'd really like to be more specific. So I'm gonna show you, or review possibly, um, how you simplify this. So whenever we have a square number inside the square root, we wanna split it up, okay? So I'm gonna come up with two numbers that multiply to be 50. And you wanna choose a number so that one of them is a perfect square. So our perfect squares are like, 2 squared is 4, 4 is a perfect square. 3 squared is 9, 9 is a perfect square. 4 squared is 16, 16 is a perfect square, that sort of thing. So I know that 25 is a perfect square, and I know that goes into 50. So I'm going to change this so that I get 25 times 2, right? They're still the same thing, 25 times 2 is going to give me 50. And then I'm going to give them each their own square root. So the square root of 25, square root of 2. And then I know that the square root of 25 is 5, so this turns into 5 square root of 2. And that would be my answer. So that's the same thing as the square root of 50. It's just a nicer way to write it. And I want to do one more and show you something that sometimes will happen and I can get around it. So the square root of 48. Well, I know that 4 goes into that. So square root of 4 times 12. And I could split it up. So square root of 4, square root of 12. The square root of 4 is 2, so I get 2 square root of 12. That's actually not as simple as we can get it, because the square root of 12, I can split that up to be 4 and 3. So 2 square root of 4 times 3. If I give them both their own square root, square root of 4, square root of 3. These are all multiplying. I don't have to put the dot in between them, right? We just kind of know that. So when I split this up, I get 2, right, my 2 out front. Square root of 4 is 2. This doesn't turn into 22 out front. These are being multiplied, so don't forget that. 
and square root of 3. 2 times 2 is 4. So this turns into 4 square root of 3. How you could have saved some time there is if you, when we started with the square root of 48, if you look to the bigger perfect squares, so start higher and then work down, um, we would have known that we could split this into 16 times 3. Because then we get the square root of 16 and the square root of 3. Square root of 16 is 4, so this turns into 4 square root of 3. You get the same answer, but this way was a lot quicker, right? So there's nothing wrong in going the long way. You're just giving yourself some more work. So let's try another problem. We're given that the hypotenuse is 12 and one of the legs is 6. So I've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So it, my hypotenuse, the 12, has to go in for c squared, so that's 12 squared. Doesn't matter where you put your 6, whether you plug it in for a or for b. I'm going to plug it in for b. So 6 squared. So I get that a squared plus 36 is equal to 144. And then I'll subtract 36 from both sides. 144 minus 36 gives me 108. A squared equals 108. And then again, to get rid of that squared, we need to take the square root. So I'm going to square root both sides, and I get that A equals the square root of 108. That actually, if we do it on our calculator, comes out to be like 10.4. But this is one of those cases where what we just learned is going to come into play. We don't want to leave it as just the square root of 108, and we don't want to leave it as a decimal because we have to round it. So we're going to simplify the square root of 108. So we got to start looking what goes into 108. So if I can split this up to 36 and 3. This is one of those cases where instead of going for 36, you could have gone for like, oh, 9 goes into it, or 4 goes into it, right? And going back to that problem we just did, if you took out 9, it's going to take a lot longer, but you're still going to get the same answer. So I went for the bigger perfect square so that it won't take me as long. Because I can split this up now into 36 and the square root of 3. And the square root of 36 is 6, so this turns into 6 square root of 3. So A equals 6 square root of 3. Okay, a story problem. Let's just do our got it problem here. The size of a computer monitor is the length of its diagonal. You want to buy, so let's get a picture here. Okay, there's your computer monitor. You want to buy a 19 inch monitor. So they're saying that that 19 is actually the diagonal. So that's 19. That has a height of 11 inches. And we need to figure out what is the width of the monitor. This case they say round to the nearest tenth of an inch. So they don't want us to simplify like we did in the last problem. They just want the decimal. So we can assume this is a right triangle, right? You don't see monitors that are not rectangular, or not square, right? They always have a right angle. So we've got a right triangle here that we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for. So we've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I'll plug in 11 for my a, keep my b squared. Again, it doesn't matter whether you plug the 11 in for your a or for your b. And 19 is my hypotenuse, so 19 squared. Okay, 11 squared is 121 plus b squared equals, and 19 squared is 361. And then I'm going to subtract 121 from both sides. I get that b squared is equal to 240. And then I need to take the square root of both sides. b equals, so I need to do the square root of 240. And I get 15, well it's actually 15.49193338, right? It goes on for a while. When I round it to the nearest tenth, I get 15.5. So that's 15.5 inches is my final answer. 
And there's your homework.